guys, it's Laura and you're watching Laura X Annie and welcome back to our channel. Hello. I'm back with the ever lovely, my best friend and flatmate, Millie. You can also call me Lord of the Underworld. Because she is. My friend does. Hades who? <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking our top 10 films. If you didn't know, you're film students. Uh, you're like with film. Yeah. And a wee quick disclaimer. Oh, our quick disclaimer is that these films, our top 10 favourite films, are accurate as of the 18th of August 2019. We are fickle people and this list may change. <laughs> Probably will. As we decide to watch new films. Yes. And get introduced to films by each other. Now, I... I've done this very quickly because okay. I've never thought about all 10 of my films so I kind of did it my top three and in the next films that came to my head I then ordered them if the the next seven films that came into my head I kind of ordered them that way which I think works as well it's like because if the, they come to your head quite quickly you've either watched them really recently or you actually enjoyed them yeah so without further ado in at number 10 number 10! Oh, mine is the original Wicker Man. Oh. Yeah. Mine is The World's End. Oh! Ooh. So no. why do you like The Wicker Man? Because um, my dad, I don't know how he got himself introduced to it, but he really, really loves the film. And obviously because, you know, my mother is able to say no to him as his wife, I, as his child, and I'm unable to say no as much as I say no to him, he is deaf when it comes to that. So, um, I ended up watching The Wicker Man and ended up enjoying it. And it is the original one, not the one with Nicolas Cage. I tried to watch five minutes of that and then was like, <laughs> yeeted that out the window. So yeah, I've been to where The Wicker Man was filmed. I have a piece of The Wicker Man, the original, from By The Head, where they actually filmed it. Um, so yeah, it's a kind of sentimental film, even though it's about sacrificing and pains <laughs> and Scottish culture. Ah, well. Why do you like World's End? Well, I mean, if you know me, it's pretty obvious. I like the Cornetto trilogy. The other two films are definitely going to appear. But I would say that the World's End is not my least favourite, mm -hmm. but it's just the one I like the least. Fair. I don't That's like fair. it as much as I like the other two, but it's still, it's still definitely in my top ten films. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's understandable. Number nine. nine, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, mine is Love Rosie. Oh, never even seen that. <laughs> What's that about? Um, so oh, is that the one where he writes to her, right? Makes her up. No. no. Okay. Love Rosie uh, stars Lily Collins and Sam Coughlin, and it's about they're both friends in school. It's English based, British based. Quite a few of these films are actually pretty British based. Actually, I think quite a few of them are. Um, so yeah, it's British based and basically they're friends and they sort of have this crush on each other but they're best pals and okay. then they, go, they want to go to America together and then on prom night she gets pregnant and she is like, she's raising this Wayne and she can't go to America to study with, even though she got in, because she's got a Wayne to raise and he comes back and it's basically just all their near misses and will they, won't they, will they, won't they and then of course it's a film so obviously they do get together in the end but it's very very cute, it's a very kind of like comedy, romantic, bit yeah. serious I just, it's a feel good film that I could watch again and again and I have so why do you like Guardians so well, much? Why, why wouldn't you? Chris Pratt is topless in it and he dances a lot and plus Zoe Saldana's in it so and Karen Gillan yeah, Bradley but, Cooper. Yeah, but he's not in it. He plays a raccoon. I will so, like anyway, Guardians is a very good film. It's yeah. better than the second one. Yeah. In at number eight. Oh, it's me that goes first. You're first. You're first. The Little Mermaid. Oh! I didn't include any kids' films in mine. <laughs> And there's some of my books. Mine is Pineapple Express. Oh, oh, why Pineapple Express? Because oh, it's so freaking funny. And it was like, I think it was one of the first films I actually watched 
with like you know the James Franco, Seth Rogen, those lot. Like, yeah, um, yeah. Danny McBride as well. Like, that's where my yeah. mini obsession with Danny McBride came from. Um, I was gonna put this as the end, which is their other film, but Pineapple Express is just funnier for me. Yeah, I love Pineapple Express. If you're not like into stoner comedy, you might not like it, but if you are. Okay, so, uh, mine is Little Mermaid, but it's not Little Mermaid that you think. Mm. It's a Little Mermaid to I think it's Return to the Sea, I believe it's called. I fucking love that film. I'm not joking. I love Melody. I love that song. In a moment, I just think it's really funny. I love it. I love everything about it. I love how it's instead of a mermaid wanting to become a human, it's a human wanting to become a mermaid because, I mean, who doesn't want to be? Um, fish are creepy. But as a kid, when you're watching that, you're not a mermaid. So to me, it was like a kind of film that I was like, oh, I feel like her. And if you ever want to do a stage version of it, I'll happily play Melody. <laughs> like, Lucky. There's people in their 30s that are playing like 15 year olds. Like, I can get away with that. Yeah. I still look 15. Yeah, well, yeah, I get that. I get ID'd for Red Bull, so. Okay, so in at number seven. That makes seven. Sightseers. Oh, I've never heard of that one before. It's about two people. Mm -hmm. um, well, it, mm, it's very difficult to explain. It's a British film. Mm -hmm. it came out in 2012, I believe. But it's about two people. This is the one that I couldn't remember the name of. Oh, right, okay. But, it's very good. I think it's very good and it's about this woman and this man. They go around visiting all these places and it ends up getting a bit dark mm -hmm. and morbid. Right. That's what I'm going to say. Ooh, I'm going to have to look into You should. That. It's really good. I love it. What is your number seven? World Sense. I think I agree with that one. That's a pretty good film. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Gary fucking King. I just love, obviously, I'm a big slut for Martin Freeman, so him having a bit of a bigger role in this film. Yeah. But I also think I just like the pretense of this film. I love Simon Pegg as Gary. I think he just does it. I mean, throughout the Cornetto trilogy, they all show their big yeah. range of acting. But yeah, The World's End's a good film. Yeah. And at number six. Mine is Pride. Ooh, I didn't even include it on mine! <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, go on. Yeah, Pride. Um, so Millie introduced me to Pride. I hadn't watched it. It'd been on my list. Bear in mind, it had been on my list. But once I watched that film, I caught the feelings. <laughs> we didn't stop listening to Shame, Shame, Shame all day. Oh, it's such a tune. But we have actually since been, I'll insert two photos on top of mine and Millie's faces of us outside the actual bookshop used in Pride, if you're okay with that. Yes. And it was Gay's Award and we went to it, we got stuff from it. Yeah. So it was just cool, really cool being there where gay history happened. It's yeah. Especially like UK gay history. It was really and if cool. you go into the back of the shop you can actually see where they did it. And most it of them are exciting. still alive apart from Mark. Mark, yes. But yeah, Pride is a very good film. You should watch it, especially for queer history. Yeah. And you can tell it's that good because it came in at number six on my six. top ten and I only watched it really recently. My number six is The Blues Brothers. <laughs> yes, Shot Millie. Horror. Love The Blues Brothers. Um, I used to watch it with my granddad. It's, it's just peak 80s comedy, if you ask me. It's got the Illinois Nazis. It's got such great, like, fake... CGI, not CGI, but like, I don't really know, it used, the, it destroyed the most amount of police cars in a film. That's a banging point. That's um, quite a good point, actually. It also, I don't know, it was it was one of the first films, I think, came, that came off of characters, because they originally were Saturday Night Live characters. The yes. Brothers, and then they got this full feature length film. But I, I think it's, don't bother watching Blues Brothers 2000s, right, because mm -hmm. I did age like 15 thinking oh my god I love that old blues and I pretended that I loved it but no nothing will beat the original blues brothers and also if you go to Universal they have a huge big blues they brother. do they I, do I've been to the one in LA and I've been to the one in Orlando and they obviously do them they have, both yeah, they have the big police car I love it and they still do it they still have the blues brothers come out at certain points in the day and sing the songs yeah. 
it's amazing. I went to a swimming concert once and it was my favourite thing. <laughs> in at number five, mine is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. That's my favourite. Yeah. I've only seen three Harry Potter films, but I like that one the most. Yeah. Don't chastise me, YouTube, please. <laughs> no, and also I agree with her stick. <laughs> Stick at Prisoner of Azkaban. I love that film. It's there's one with the uh, the night bus, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I love that one. <laughs> Take it away. Yeah, me. I love that one. <laughs> Obviously, as you guys know, I'm a huge slut for Remus and Sirius, and of course that's where they're first introduced. Oh, Tina's also a slut for them, apparently. Oh, oh come on. Um, so yeah, of course, Harry Potter is a huge part of my life. But of course, Prisoner of Azkaban is a very Good film. Yes. It's quite a good film. Oh. I don't think Tina really <laughs> <is>. <laughs> I think her favourite's The Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> well, I have um, a Buckbeak toy and I gave it to Tina and she's already broke its leg and I, I, I'm more than happy that she has because I know that she loves it and it means that she feels at home. <laughs> also makes me sad about Buckbeak, but that's okay because Buckbeak's leg can get fixed with magic, can't it, darling? Anyway. What's your number five? Oh, my number five is Hot Fuzz. <laughs> Yay! Well, I told you that it was going to be up there. Uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's I think it's one of the peak of British cinema. Oh yeah. To be honest, because it's got all the you know the classic like action movie stuff, but it's got peak British village. The amount of times we walk into a village and go. Feels a bit hot fuzz, doesn't it? Yeah, because it, you'll feel it. I you drive great... through it, the country roads, and you're definitely it. like, this is definitely a hot, hot fuzz village. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I love hot fuzz. Number four. What's your number? My four? number four is oh, why? Oh, oh, oh Christ! Let me check. My number four is a film called Two Little Boys. Oh. Mm. It's a New Zealand film. It mm -hmm. features one of the guys from Flight of the Concords and also Hamish from Hamish and Andy. Let go, let go, she'll, 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 she'll survive. <laughs> uh, Hamish from Hamish and Andy and uh, what it is, uh, Brett I think his name is, uh, the one from Flight of the Concords, he accidentally kills a guy and it's about how they deal with him accidentally killing a tourist in New Zealand. Mm. It's very good. I think mm. it's very good. But yeah, it's uh, unfortunately named after the Ralph Harris song, but you can just ignore that, oh. all right? And just <laughs> ignore that because the film itself is very, very good. What's your number four? Scream four. It's alright, could be worse, you could be Alex. Five. Alex's favourite film of all time is Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I am a slut for the Scream films. And I love the Scream trilogy, I would have put it in, but the reason why I love the fourth one just that little bit more is because I was old enough to go see it in the cinema. And to me, it was like, it's not just the film itself, it's the experience behind the film. Yeah. And getting to go, I went twice, it's one of the few films I've actually been into the cinema to see twice. But with two different groups of friends to go see it. And I swear to you guys, honestly, if you guys have watched my reacting video, you will know that, or if you were on Best Friends, probably you'll know that I I hit like 2,000 views in a video because I did the Scream, the TV series movie trailer reaction thing and it was all a big blow up. But I love Scream 4, Emma Roberts is so good. The twist at the end of who the killer was and it's important to me that it's one of those trilogies that keeps, well trilogies, quadruple, whatever it is, it's theories. Yeah, that came back about 10 years later and still had the original cast of David Arquette. Yeah. Courtney Cox cool, and yeah. I don't Campbell. think it would have been as big if they No, it wouldn't have been. I think that was what was important was to have those guys still in it and still kind of keep the magic going. Magic going. <gasps> We're into the top, the big top. We're into the big top three. three. Number three. I already know what it's going to yeah. be. Iron Man. <laughs> I didn't mean it this way. This, I is knew not, it. this is not how it got right. I am a slut for sequels that everyone hates. She's a slut for Iron Man and Robert Downey Jr. Basically, I'd be surprised if the rest weren't. Number one and number two is just a video of Robert Downey Jr. sleeping. I I adore Iron Man, and as much as I, the reason Endgame is not on this list is because 
I haven't watched it a second time yet and I can't really remember much about it other than Iron Man dying. Spoiler alert if you've not seen Endgame, where the fuck have you been? Have you been living under a rock or have you not been on Twitter? But Iron Man 3, I love the way they, they portray Tony in this. It's not much about the suit, it's more about Tony, which kind of thingies. And plus, I did, yeah, no, I agreed with you. I liked it in the way that um, they had uh, Tony's anxiety mm -hmm. and PTSD, and I think that was really important to give it to Iron Man out yeah. of all of the Avengers because a lot of men look up yeah. to Iron Man as this unattainable male icon, but he's got his flaws. Like, and they also, it was the first film to establish what had happened in the Avengers, which MCU, I have to admit, is not too bad at doing, establishing, yeah. they'd like to add the things in, and I think it would have been stupid in Iron Man 3 not to mention, like, that bit where the kid goes, how did you get out the wormhole? And yeah. he, like, panics. But also, when Falcho is Pepper Potts in that fucking sports bra and leggings, I mean! <laughs> and the end, just being a badass and just taking the suit out of the air, I mean, fuck me. Just recently watched it again and I was like, fuck. Anyway, what's your number three? My number three is a film called Safety Not Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And it's based on a real life advert mm -hmm. that said uh, that showed up in the paper that said something like, um, wanted a friend for time travel, uh, must bring own weapons, um, I've only done this once before, safety not guaranteed. Mm. So it's, yeah. That's quite interesting. Yeah, really that is very good. I, it's got Aubrey Plaza in it, it's got um, the guy who played Nick Miller in New Girl, something Johnson, Johnson. Mm, I love him, but anyway, he's a yeah. very attractive man. But yeah, it's it's got a good cast. It might be quite slow for some people, mm -hmm. but it is, uh, like, it's not my typical film anyway, I yeah. wouldn't say so, but yeah, I really like it. It's got a really beautiful feel to it. I'll definitely watch it. You should. Number two! two. Melly, what's your number two? Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! Of course it's my number two. I love Ghostbusters. I always have. Um... I don't read the, like the original 1984 mm. one. The new one's good. Don't get me wrong, but the original is my favourite. Um, yeah, it's it's great. It's like two hours of of fun. Like, I mean, definitely watching it back now, I'm like, oh my god, will they just hurry the fuck up and bust? <laughs> but yeah, I, I love it. It's got so many lines in it that I still say like to this day. It's just. It's, it's I've not had the pleasure of watching it yet. I've seen the new one because I got forced to watch it. But you're I'm forced to watch the old one as well. Know, but I'm looking for it's one of those ones that's on the list, and sometimes you end up just watching, rewatching yeah. old movies. Yeah. It is on my list. Though. It's so good. What's your number two? My number two is a little indie film, and I'm not saying this to be like it's a humongous big film. And I'm just trying to play it down as seriously as an indie film, and not many people know about it unless you're a huge Benedict Cumberbatch fan. It's or called you Flora. Millie bought me that as a moving in <laughs> present and I thought obviously it was the sweetest thing anyone had done for me. This is called Third Star. So I think I've discussed Third Star before. Third Star is a film about um, four guys that go to Balfundle Bay in Wales and uh, it's the last trip they're going to take because one of them, Ben Cumberbatch's character, James, has cancer and what his mates don't know is that he doesn't plan to come back from this trip. Now, does he or does he not? You'll have to watch it to find out. Basically, my all-time favourite quote is what is said at the end, and it's the movie I put on if I need a cry and I just can't. It still makes me cry no matter what, and it's amazing. But I remember saying in first-year film that that was my film, and I remember our film tutor at the time hated it because mm. she couldn't interview Benedict Cumberbatch because she'd interviewed the cast of Third Star, and Benedict <laughs> was filming Sherlock at the time. Because it came out, um, it was filmed around the same time as season one of Sherlock, so they were... No, I think they filmed season one of Sherlock. I think season one had come out and they were filming. It came out in 2020, I'm, I'm sure. Either way, there was scheduling conflict. Yeah, but it's a really good film and I urge you. But obviously, if you don't like watching films that include cancer and all that, I wouldn't watch it if you're not in the right place. But it is a, it's a beautifully shot film and some of the cinematography at the end is just beautiful. No! no! Mine is The Prestige. The Prestige? The Prestige, i.e. Batman and uh, <laughs> Wolverine with the help of Alfred. And the Goblin King. And the Goblin King and Go uh, Gollum, just all, it's all to do with magic. 
that's badly described. But basically, it's Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale are both magicians, and it's all about them fighting to be the best musician, uh, musician, magician, and there's a trick that is made, and basically one of them dies, and it's it's very convoluted. A lot of people don't like it. I think it's a brilliant film. We've got Scarlett Johansson's in it, Rebecca Hall. David Bowie is in it, guys. David Bowie plays Nikola Tesla. I mean, come on! If you thought David Bowie was good in Zoolander, see him in The Prestige, guys. I can't believe you picked Zoolander out of all of Bowie's fucking films. <laughs> Because I thought it was the one my audience would know the best. <laughs> Labyrinth! <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about the Labyrinth. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a brilliant film. I I adore it. I couldn't find it in DVD for ages. Found it in CEX and Sterling of all the places. Uh, my dad hasn't even seen it, but my dad hasn't seen Labyrinth, so he's a fake Bowie fan. He's a fake Bowie fan! He is. Um, it's just... I don't know why it's a really good film to me. It's like... It's not even got like my favourite like favourite big stars like Tom yeah. Hiddleston or anything like that. It's just I don't know what it is about it. It just hooks me every time. And it's set in like the where whatever Hugh Jackman whenever, whenever played Nikola in, Tesla was around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, obviously, the current war's out now. If you want to watch it, apparently I wouldn't. I mean, I would be cautious about watching it as a Harvey Weinstein project, but it's just because I'm saying Nikola Tesla. Yeah. But it's now been rebanded, it's not. Uh, yeah. But still, because I'm as much a love Benedict Cumberbatch, it's not getting wide world. It, the only good thing about it is not getting worldwide cinema release, it's getting indie cinemas. We've got it on at the Mick Robert, but it's just finished. But just if I mention Nikola Tesla, the current war is out. It's got Tom Holland in it if you're into it. But what is your number one? This is the most important thing. My number one. Shaun of the Dead. I fucking do it! Yes, it's Millie! It's been my favourite film since I was like 10 years old. So yeah. my mum snuck me into the cinema to go see it. I love Shaun of the Dead. I love zombies. I love zombies. I love Simon Pegg. I love Nick Frost, Edgar Wright. Them as this creative team. They're just excellent as well. I love Spaced as a TV show, but Shaun of the Dead, I think, is the most accurate representation of what would happen in Britain mm -hmm. if an actual apocalypse happens. Mm -hmm. Two mates just being like, oh, fuck it, let's go to the pub. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, it, it's, for me, it's funnier than Hot Fuzz and The World's End, but I think that's because I have always liked zombies. Yeah. And zombie stuff and the undead yeah. stuff. So Shaun of the Dead will always be my number one favourite film. Mm -hmm. And you, if you haven't seen it, what the fuck are you doing watching this? Go watch Shaun of the Dead, it's on Netflix. Yes, that's it. We're going to go to co-op and get nachos. And we will see you guys next time with another video. Give us some ideas on things to yes, film together as well. Please do. We really want to because we sit here and for us we're like, oh, this is bit boring but it's we have fun making them yeah and yeah. we would like to know what more you would like to see okay tina's just making herself very comfortable <laughs> on the sofa and also you guys won't see us till september so maybe we'll have thought of some more ideas we'll try yeah we'll try we'll try we'll try i think i might do laura's makeup blindfolded yes <laughs> yes but there is quite a few ideas we've got we've got some really good ideas for october yeah so but you guys, give us any ideas yes, that you want us to do comments down below duos. I'll of course link Millie every time and go thingy her thing. <coughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay because I said go thingy her thing. So go <laughs> thingy my thing. <laughs> go follow her on Twitter and Instagram and yeah, keep up to date with all her projects. <laughs> and my Etsy store is linked down below. And hopefully by this point, I might too. have one. <laughs> we'll <laughs> see. Hers <laughs> may be like down below. You never know. You maybe. Never know. But anyway, we will see you soon. Bye.